This is Mises Weekends with your host, Jeff Dice. Welcome back once again to Mises Weekends. I'm on the road this week rather than in the studio, but in studio I have my colleague, the intrepid Tho Bishop. Uh, earlier this week, Richard Spencer, the alt-right provocateur, visited the Auburn campus after a, a, a federal judge uh, insisted that Auburn University allow him to do so. And it turned out to be quite the event, not quite the Battle of Berkeley, but nonetheless, it certainly made the news. And Mr. Spencer is raising some questions of nation and state that I think are very interesting. So Tho uh, went over and saw the talk that Mr. Spencer delivered. And uh, so first and foremost, though, thanks for joining. Welcome. And uh, what, what are your overall impressions of uh, Richard Spencer and the whole the whole event? Well, the, the, the greatest disappointment I had is, you know, Look at watching the event. It, it came across that he wasn't really some some dangerous thought criminal per se. He wasn't, you know, some real life red skull. Um, for the most part, it was really kind of boring uh, to start off with. I mean, you know, his uh, he took himself very seriously, and and he had a very you know big group, a very big audience there. Um, I think a lot of people were just very interested to see what all of this controversy was about. Uh, and he started off, you know, trying to make this big thing about free speech. But, of course, he doesn't really care about free speech when it comes down to it. And he made that clear later on. Um, so all in all, I mean, it was it was the hype was bigger than I think the event itself. Um, you know, there was a lot of uh, protests going on, uh, none of which were violent. The, the, uh, the Auburn police did a very good job of unmasking uh, some of the Antifa activists that came from Atlanta. Um, but for the most part, I thought the most interesting took away, takeaway I took uh, from Richard Spencer's talk was not that, uh, uh, you know, this is something that is, is uh, you know, has, a, has a danger of uh, changing American and Nazi Germany or something that you might hear from, uh, you know, the New York Times or something like that. But mainly that, uh, you know, the, the most uh, the, the best thing that could happen to Richard Spencer is for him to be blocked from college campuses to censor his speech. Um, because I think when more people listen to his message, uh, instead of hearing some, you know, dangerous new ideas, they're going to hear a lot of uh, kind of just the same old uh, things that we've heard in the past. Well, it's interesting to me that he brings up free speech. Of course, shame on Auburn University for attempting to block him in the first place to, to the point where it required a, an order from a federal judge to let him speak. And, and it's also interesting to me that really very left-wing professors who advocate all kinds of things are not only allowed to speak on public college campuses around the country, but are often members of the faculty uh, itself at, at whatever university. But I do think it speaks well of the city of Auburn and, and just sort of the culture of the South that this was anything but the Battle of Berkeley. Uh, you know, this is a, a place where people tend to be more conservative in their lifestyle and in their outlook, and we didn't have any silliness, even with some interlopers from Atlanta. Uh, one thing that interested me, though, is you know he, he talks a lot about nationalism in the state, but what I don't understand is how he imagines, whether you want a white nationalist state or any other kind of state, how he imagines one is going to take over the apparatus of some vast Western government like the United States and repurpose it. I mean, does he not understand that that government is inherently progressive and that you, you can't use government to forward his purposes? I, I really don't know. You know, he, he I think he kind of really th considers himself to be some great intellectual. But, uh, you know, hearing him talk, he's clearly no uh, no Paul Godfrey or, or even like a Jared Taylor. Um, you know, he is he's been kind of playing to and that, that's kind of one of the interesting developments, you know, in the last last year or so. You know, he, he went from being, you know, kind of a libertarian ish sort of guy, um, you know, quoting Hoppe and stuff like that to being more, uh, you know, he, he was out there praising Bernie. Uh, praising big government and talking about how he loves socialism. Uh, he's out in the past. He said, oh, you know, we should just uh, advocating for Trump just to go ahead and embrace universal health care. Um, so, you know, he's he's gone full on with the state. And, you know, he can he I think he actually kind of believes this whole narrative that he's built or or at least does a good job of selling it that, oh, well, this is some great revolution um, that we're going to reform uh, uh, American society. Well, the tactics here just don't hold up. Right? I mean, the idea that you're ever going to uh, to be able to get through the state, uh, the development of some sort of white ethno state that he desires, the, the idea that he's ever going to win through uh, uh, democracy or anything like this. I um, mean, you know, as you've talked about you know, many times in the past, you know, the, the Trump election was not some great uh, revolution for white identity or or some some uh, uh, great turning point in American history. It's really a speed bump for the left. Um, 
So that's uh, whether Spencer gets it or not. How much, and, and that's kind of where I think Spencer needs to, is. You know, it's, it's interesting to see him develop his role. I mean, is he supposed to be some sort of great leader for this alt right that he's put together, or is he more like a Milo? Is he a provocateur? Is he someone that you know his real great uh, skill is getting protests to show up and try to censor him? Um, you know, I I don't know. Uh, he's, he's talked a lot in the past about the need for the alt right to go out and, and embrace main, you know, to get out in, in the real world. But uh, it's, it's difficult to do that when you're out there uh, LARPing as a Nazi uh, and making jokes about uh, you know, Nazi in Germany at, at, at your events. So uh, I, where where Spencer actually wants to go with this outside of making a name from himself, uh, you know, in, in the news is uh, you know, we'll see how that plays out. Well, it's clear that he equates nation with state in, in ways that certainly – Mises and, and Rothbard would not. Of course, Mises, as we know, was an Austrian patriot, uh, and, and Rothbard later in life came to really understand the concept of a nation, uh, of a unit other than just the state or the individual for us to analyze as libertarians and, and understanding society. But but I, I just wonder you know, what Spencer might think in such a huge country, 320 million people with such a vast government. Um, You'd think that he would be talking about a Benedict option of sorts for white nationalists. He would be talking about some sort of breakaway uh, rather than trying to overtake and repurpose a, a, a vast government and military. You know, the only conclusion I can draw from this, though, is that he, he is an unserious person and that he's doing this for publicity. Absolutely. And, you know, I actually brought up the, the point uh, with him. I asked the question at the event. Um, because he, he he took a lot of pleasure in, in uh, bad mouthing college football, right? Which is, uh, you know, that that's that's dangerous territory when you come on Auburn's campus and start bad mouthing college football. Um, but I think it really kind of speaks to a larger point here, and that you know he when he talks about a white white ethno state, um, you know, it's this overly simplistic homogenization of uh, you know of, of white identity. I mean, you know, I was born in the South. You know, I, I consider myself a Southerner. Um, you know, Spencer was born in Massachusetts. We have very different backgrounds, uh, very different cultures in that regard. Um, and so, you know, I, I think within kind of a, a Misesian framework of, of what a nation is, I mean, the idea of, you know, wanting to have your own uh, culture preserved, um, you know, the idea of, of not being over, not being ruled by foreigners that don't, you know, that, that just have so many things, you know, whether it be language or, or other components that are completely foreign to you, um, you know, I don't, I don't think anyone wants that. Uh, but you can have that, you know, being, being the South being ruled by a bunch of Yankees in New York or, uh, you know, or, or Texans being decided by the rest of the country or, or even Californians um, should not be governed by red states. Um, you know, if, if I, the only way that any of this sort of stuff makes sense is by embracing this sort of decentralization option, um, this, this breakup of uh, you know, this, these political uh, monopolies. Uh, but but he doesn't he doesn't seem remotely interested in that. He uh, instead of trying to uh, discuss realistic ideas on, on how you know, if he wants to carve out a little piece for himself in Montana and white uh, in, in, you know, around Whitefish and get enough people to to buy into that and, and buy their own property. And, and, you know, they can do whatever they want in their own little community. Uh, but instead, he would rather uh, uh, badmouth and mock libertarians uh, and, and kiss up to Bernie Sanders supporters. So uh, it's, it's a very interesting uh, strategy. Well, very bold. We'll see how that plays out. Well, and I think it's important for us to understand, as so many libertarians don't seem to understand, is that Richard Spencer and Trump are, are, are reactions to a, a viciously overreaching and hateful left in this country. I mean, we, 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 should, we need to understand that the real threat to liberty in this country is overwhelmingly comes from the left, not the right. That, you know, Mike Huckabee is not going to install a theocratic uh, federal government anytime soon. Richard Spencer is not going to take over Montana anytime soon. But there are very real progressive authoritarians all around us. They're at your kid's junior high school. They're making decisions on your city council uh, meetings on Tuesday night. So, so I think Richard Spencer is something that the, the left wing media actually loves because it allows them to create this idea that there's a rising national right uh, represented by Trump and the alt right, which is of course I, just false. I mean, if alt right means someone who doesn't like the GOP establishment but considers themselves not a liberal, well, that's a lot of people. 
uh, and it, they're painting with far too broad a brush. But let me get back to your point you made about football. Now, I like that because I do think, especially college football, tends to be uh, state-sponsored bread and circuses. But uh, I, I'm told that 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 the the uh, what he said about football, or the question he got about it, might have actually been staged, and that he was obviously Auburn is SEC football crazy, and that he was actually trying to goad the audience with that. I think it was probably, you know, again, I think he, he relishes being a, a Milo-like provocateur. I think he'd probably be insulted by that comparison. But to me, that's really kind of the core of what he's doing right now. Um, and, and I think it's, you know, again, it, you know, perhaps, you know, for, for, for the betterment of everyone else, I mean, I think it's to his detriment. Um, because I, I do think, I mean, I've seen for myself the rise of, uh, at least, at the very least, curiosity, if not outright, uh, uh, you, know, ch- you know, loyalty to the alt-right from people who used to be libertarians. I saw many students for Rand, uh, you know, activists, for example, last year become, uh, you know, interested in Richard Spencer. You had, uh, you know, people invite Richard Spencer to come speak at, at ISFLC uh, you know, this past February. You know, and, I th- and it's directly a response to what you are seeing on college campuses. I mean, people are sick and tired of being, of, of being told about their white privilege. People are, are sick and tired of being told that men are the problem with society. Um, you know, you had, the, you had the Huffington Post article that they were forced to take down the fake thing about uh, the need to take away the voting rights of uh, white males in South Africa. Well, the reason why that was published in the first place, because it read like something that could be true in society today. Right. And so he is right. definitely a response to this progressive climate that we see. And but but from his angle, instead of taking advantage of kind of the this animosity that maybe your average 20 year old Auburn you know white guy feels about how he's treated in this, this growing society and he's antagonizing them uh, and, and taking himself way too seriously where, you know, I had a bunch of people behind me who they were there just to see the spectacle of the whole thing. And uh, you're kind of curious to see what he had to say. And, and by halfway through, they were laughing at him rather than with him. Um, so the more I think he, you know, he has to decide, is, is he trying to win over people or is he just trying to poke um, and get headlines for himself? Um, and you know, this, this event seemed more, uh, just to be more about uh, getting Richard Spencer's name in the news than it was about uh, winning hearts and minds, which, you know, it's probably a good thing in the long run. Well, it's interesting. I noted that uh, Richard Spencer came out in favor of single-payer health care, and I I assume that what he means by that, though, is that there are deeper cultural and national questions that we ought to be uh, obsessing over rather than health care exchanges. And so if we all have a common purpose in, in the kind of nation he envisions, uh, single payer health care is is no big problem if we were just like the Swedes or or the Norwegians. Uh, um, did he mention that during his talk? Uh, no, not really. He didn't, he didn't go that far into it. Um, you know, he just said, you know, hey, you know, libertarians, are, libertarians are stupid. Socialism's great. I love big government. It was pretty much the the, the depth of his, uh, his his conversation there. Um, but I think that kind of reflects a larger issue that I've seen just from some of the alt right that I've I've talked to. Um, you know, they really they're not interested in economics. They're not interested in, uh, you know, any of the, you know, these sort of, of questions. You know, they're, they're, they're vehemently anti free trade, for example, which I mean, as, as Ryan McMakin had a, an article on The Wire a few weeks ago, you know, if you're against immigration, then you really need free trade because that's the best way. You know, that's what Mises talked about in, uh, you know, repeatedly. Um, you know, I, I think that. Uh, you know, right. So far, I mean, the, the, he hasn't needed he hasn't really need to come up with solutions to how to implement this in practice, um, because until late, you know, the alt right has merely existed in, in, on 4chan um, and within meme culture. And only now are they trying to, uh, you know, at least pretend to go out in real life and and, and try to, uh, you know, get political. Um, you know, and, and, and then, of course, you know, their entire rise, I think, has, has as much to do with uh the, the desperation of Hillary Clinton and the media to tie Donald Trump uh, into their movement uh, more than anything that they've done themselves. But uh, you know, they, they haven't had to really uh, address real questions on how uh, you know, their society would actually function. Um, and and I, I, again, based off of the tactics I've seen so far, they, they never really will. Well, we have to wrap it up, but I, I do think it's interesting 
that he brings up questions of culture and nation. I think libertarians ought not to be scared of these questions. I think we ought to uh, look to people like Mises and Rothbard for guidance on some of these things, however thorny they might be. And I also think Richard Spencer ought to be allowed to speak. I think this is a, an absurd situation we've devolved into in the United States where the left gets a pass and uh, at least someone who's ostensibly on the right does not. So thank you so much for your time today. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great weekend. Subscribe to Mises Weekends via iTunes U, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, or listen on Mises.org and YouTube.